called The Things She Says. Day one. I think I have to tell my husband, she says, deeply solemn. Her eyes were downcast and her body's slumped in imagined future sadness and fighting. She says this sometimes, or things like this, but she never carries through with it. It's just, it's just one of the things she says. In the here and now, I don't know what to say, so I say nothing. I uh, have to get going, get dinner started for my wife and kids. I stood there and waited for a response, but she didn't give one. So I gave her an awkward hug and a kiss and said, I'll see you in a few days. And I left her there, standing in the hallway in front of her apartment door, disheveled and unhappy because I had nothing to say that would make it easier. I drove home, made dinner for the family, laughed with the kids and snuggled with my wife as we watched TV together before bed. Day four, I was at her apartment again. She was happier this time and pleased to see me again. We sat on her bed and talked. She told me about her job, about how she felt her boss was out to get her and some of her coworkers were great, but others uh, didn't do a damn thing ever. We talked about TV and music, her going to coffee with a bunch of her friends, movies she wanted to watch. And when I gave her a parting hug and kiss, it felt better, happier, more right. Day nine, we had a few hours together. We went to the mall to do some clothes shopping for her. She'd been complaining loudly and in embarrassing pub embarrassingly public places about how our underwear and bras were old and uncomfortable. We held hands as we walked through the bustle of the mall. This was pre-COVID days, you understand. And she couldn't remember the last time she'd been to the mall and looked a little overwhelmed by the activity and noise of it all. I held tightly to her hand as she shuffled close next to me to keep her from getting lost in the sea of shoppers. We found what we needed pretty quickly and purchased them without me having too much opinion on them. We had time to grab a bite to eat and she relaxed a bit with the food, but it was getting a bit late. So I took her back home and walked her to her room. I thought everything was going really well, but when we got to her door, she looked me in the eye and she said, have you told her? I pretended to be perplexed at the question and responded, about what? Her face went hard and angry and she said, I'm leaving soon, moving away. You should tell your wife. I sighed inside. I had hoped she had forgotten this, but evidently she hadn't. I replied curtly to her. I don't think she needs to know. It's okay. She looked unhappy. So I left. Day 13. She needed a ride to the doctor's and I found time to take off work early to help her out. She didn't like to go to these kind of appointments alone, so I had agreed to go with her. The doctor was kind enough, tried to answer her questions, asked me if I had any questions, and then gave her the prescription. I snatched it from her and said I would take care of it for her, and I did. We didn't talk much in the car. It was kind of awkward, but a few times I thought she might have been crying softly. Day 16. She needed help again, so I'd come by to help a bit. One of the other people in the same building as her very old gentleman, a bit disconnected from the world, as a lot of people in her apartment complex, beamed at me and in a wavery voice said, you're, you're here a lot. I've, I've lost my wife, I'm looking for her. Have you seen her? I admitted I hadn't and he finished up with a, you're a good husband to yours. I blinked a few times and bit back the automatic, I am not her husband. Because what would the correction have meant to him? He was just trying to be sweet. There was no need for me to bark at him. I took the kind spirit of the words rather than the literal. Day 17, the property manager called to talk to me. Wanted to make sure everything was good between her and I explained her concerns about moving and her boss trying to get to her and the manager seemed to understand. We talked about her upcoming move and talked about what the moving company would do and what I had to do. Day 21, I packed the family in the car and we drove to her apartment. While my wife packed her clothes, getting rid of the old damaged underwear and bras, I wrapped photos in newspaper and bundled them into boxes. The kids put CDs into other boxes and we labeled everything. She tried to help, but it was pretty stressful for her, so she accomplished little, except kind of being a nuisance. As soon as I thought that, I felt bad about it. The moving guys arrived, and soon her room was entirely empty. She wondered what her husband would think when we got home. We all stopped and kind of looked at her, and then my wife said, don't, don't worry, we'll, we'll tell him when we see him next. And everything resumed. Day 28, she's been in her new apartment for a week now. It's a much smaller place, just a single room. It's better though. 
at her last place, she thought that the other room belonged to somebody else. And so sometimes she'd sleep on the couch thinking that she didn't want to intrude in somebody else's room. Day 30, I'm visiting her again on my way to work. The staff here are friendly and they buzz me in through the doors. We chat for a bit before I head upstairs to see her. She's almost always in the dining area having breakfast when I arrive. Today, she smiles sadly at me and asks, what do the kids think about me? I kiss her on the head and say, they know you love them, mom. They love you too. I've talked about, with them about what Alzheimer's means, so don't worry. I understand. Day 39, I think I have to tell my husband, she says, deeply solemn. Her eyes downcast, her body slumped and imagined future sadness and fighting. I know she won't. My dad's been dead for years now, so she really can't. This is just one of the things she says, like imagining she has a boss who hates her, or lazy coworkers, though she hasn't worked in almost a decade. In the here and now, though, I don't know what to say, so I say nothing. I have to get going, get dinner started from wife and kids. I stand there and wait for a response, but she doesn't give me one, so I give her an awkward hug and a fleeting kiss. I'll see you in a few days, and I leave her there standing in the hallway in front of her apartment door, disheveled and unhappy because I had nothing to say that would make this easier. I drive home, I make dinner for the family, I laugh with the kids, snuggle with my wife as we watch TV together before going to bed. And when I sleep, I dream of my own kids in the future, writing this story about me.